Hey guys, welcome back to Project 78. This episode, we're going to be replacing the radiator. As, as you know, the last episode, towards the end, we sprung a leak when we took it out for a test drive after replacing the ignition components. So what we did is we went out and bought a cold case radiator, and we went all out on it. We ended up going electric fans, and we're going to install this. Let's get going. All right, step one, guys, what we're going to do here uh, we're going to pull that lower radiator hose, drain the antifreeze out of the system, get all the coolant out of the radiator. Um, we're also going to take this mechanical clutch fan off because now that the uh, electric fans are going to take over, we're not going to need that anymore. So hopefully we're going to free up some horsepower here too. Another thing we don't want to forget here, these are your transmission cooling lines. They go down to the transmission, cool the transmission fluid. So those got to come off too. All right, first thing we're going to try is I'm going to try and use this, this drain plug here. Uh, it is plastic, so I don't know. We're going to try it first, and if we can get some drainage out of this thing. Oh, just spun right off. Look at this. I want to get as much coolant out as here from this point as I can. Oh, this is not working out too well. All right. I'm catching most of it there. Let's see how that does. I'm going to let that drain, and I'm going to get cleaned up. Taking a look inside the radiator, you can see there's uh, definitely some corrosion in there. I'm trying to get this to focus. There we go. I mean, there's a little bit in there, but you got to remember this thing was installed. This radiator was installed 20 years ago. 22 years ago and it's been sitting more than it's been running so I'm just gonna unbolt it right here from the pulley also guys we're gonna get new belts here too because uh, we did inspect these in the belts again Everything being on here for 22 years, uh, they're cracked. So we're going to get new belts. A couple of years, more like 24 years. So now we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to find shorter bolts because these were yeah. sized for that spacer. Right, here's our boxes of bolts that we go to when we can't find <laughs> any nuts or bolts. This is a collection we have we were working on uh, several cars over the years. So mostly GM stuff in here. All right, so here's what we're dealing with. Uh, this is the obviously the spacer that was on there for the fan, and they had long bolts. We had long bolts going through there. To connect it to the water pump you can see you need that distance there obviously to get to the water pump uh, but now obviously without the spacer and without a fan being attached to that pulley uh, we just need shorter bolts so we're going to make a quick run because uh, we can't find any so uh, we're going to go over a hardware store and get some bolts all right so we made a trip down to the hardware store and the best we could do is these bolts uh, 5 16 they have three quarter length um, so I did a dry fit, put the pulley on back here, here so we can see where that bolt's going to line up and it's going to hit the, the housing of the water pump. So <laughs> short notice, I guess we're going to have to trim these bolts to make them work. All right, we're going to loosen up our power steering reservoir and pump here. Get this belt off. There it is. Okay. All right, 
right, there's a little bit of water in there. So I'm gonna try and tie this up out of the way so we don't lose whatever's in the hose here. One was three eighths, one was 10 millimeter. I believe so. It is free. Yeah, she's loose. Probably gonna get some more water out of here. We'll do the best we can to catch it under here. This thing's pretty full. Jeez, not much at all. So while the radiator is still bolted in, I'm going to get these lines off, our transmission lines. One thing we found working on this thing is some of these parts and bolts and everything on this car was a mixture of standard bolts and metric. A lot of stuff was made in uh, Canada, so I believe that's why, I don't know, they, 78 was like a year they started converting everything over to metric. So right now the radiator is completely isolated and there's nothing left attached to it. Lower, upper hose is off, both lines for the transmission. Yep, and these are the these are the bolts that have the they have like sheet metal nuts on the other side. And I'll tell you what, they break and they rust. So other than that, this thing, this is the last one. Put pressure on it. Works every time. All right. We get this stuff out of the way. We're gonna pull this radiator right out. Probably gonna to want to hang on to these. No matter how hard you try, you just can't uh, you can't catch all of it. <laughs> all right, radiator's out. Closer shot of the radiator here. Definitely see where it's all corroded up. All right, there's a big gaping hole now where the radiator was. Looks like everything's still there, everything's still solid. No rust, a little bit of rust maybe. All right, so as we're unboxing this, I figured I'd go over a few things, why I decided to go this direction with the radiator. And honestly, the number one reason was simply because it was, uh, it was good timing. We had the old one fail and it was a good opportunity to replace it with something better. So I went the direction with this aluminum radiator uh, with the fans. Really thought I'd get better cooling with it. Um, that's what I'm hoping anyway with these dual fans. I didn't look at the specs as far as CFM goes. I think it's on the Summit website, uh, but the engine was actually running a little bit on the hot side before, so. So getting rid of the mechanical clutch fan will also hopefully free up a little bit of horsepower. I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, it only makes sense due to the fact that you are creating a little bit of drag with that fan, so. Not sure if we're gonna notice it. Not sure if we would even be able to tell without a dyno, obviously, which we don't have in our garage. So uh, we're just gonna have to go by how it feels uh, after we install it and go for a test drive. Uh, the radiator itself is a cold case part number GMG544AK. I bought this through summerracing.com. I'll leave the link in the description below. The part description on the Summit radiator says it fits all G bodies except for the Grand National, of course. That's here 78 through 88. Honestly, I really hope this radiator performs half as good as it looks because the build quality really seems like it, it's, uh, it's up there. Uh, the aluminum is polished. The weld beads on it look really, really good. 
and the fans are actually nice quality as well. So really looking forward to get this thing in there and it's, I think it's going to look nice too. So, And the other item that was purchased with this kit with the radiator and fans was the wiring harness. Uh, that was part number EF1. That also came from summitracing.com. I'll leave that also, uh, the link in the description below. Take two. There we go. Yeah, that's better. I'll go back on Summit and see see what those uh, spacers look like. These are 10 mil. Overflow. So unfortunately, we don't have the new belt, so we're going to put the old belt back on. But it's not in terrible shape. So once the new one comes in, we're going to swap it out. Or just wait for that one to, to break. Just now? <laughs> yeah, just... Take it easy. Please. <laughs> Spring tension. Yeah, that's pretty good. We'll go with that. Yeah, close enough. You can always adjust it if it's a problem. Uh, I need that 916th again. All right guys, we're at the point now where we have to stop. Uh, we're out of parts. So waiting for an Amazon delivery. Uh, we've got the radiator installed. Uh, everything is there. We've got the belts installed. So what's left to finish up is the wiring. We gotta install the wiring harness. Uh, there's 12 volts we have to grab. There's a relay we have to mount. Uh, so we're gonna work on that next. All right guys, so we started on the wiring. Uh, we've mounted the relay right here, right in front of the left headlight and couple wires that attach to the fan uh, with the plugs they're gonna go down below and uh, they're gonna terminate in front of the fans in front of the radiator uh, this set of wires here the the blue and white that's I stuff that into an existing wire loom which is going to eventually the white one is eventually gonna work its way around and go to the sending unit which is going to switch your fans and the blue wire ends up going inside which is going to hit the fuse block uh, we got to fuse a switch 12 volts from the fuse block and that's going to power our relay so a few things left to finish up here and we're going to fill the system back up with antifreeze and uh yeah we're going to test this thing we're pretty close all right so the wiring is done we got all the wiring completed on the fan uh so right now we're going to put uh, some coolant back into the radiator and uh, we're going to start this thing up and what I want to do is check the temperatures on the system and see when the thermostat actually turns these fans on and uh, we're going to verify these fans run.
to start it up. We're going to let it run for a bit, let it get it warmed up. Uh, so you see the sensor there. You see my pointer. That's the sensor we just wired in. And I'm, I've got my uh, my thermal heat gun here. We're going to check the temperatures and we're going to check these fans and make sure they come out at 190. It's supposed to come out at 190 and then turn off at 180. So we'll keep an eye. We're going to let this warm up. We're at uh, 123, 125 degrees. Might have to take this thing around for a test drive to get the temperatures up. So we got this. The fans are actually running right now. Oh, and the overflow did go. Still no pressure. So that tells me the tells me the thermostat didn't open yet, but it sucked in uh, out of the overflow. All right, we're gonna add some more coolant. All right, so with the engine off and the ignition on, the fans are still gonna run. As you can hear them here. But for whatever reason, there was no pressure built up in the system. The thermostat never opened. So I don't know if it just never got the temp. A little bit confused, but I'm sure it's all going to work out. We're going to pull the cap off the radiator and see where the levels are. It did pull some coolant out of the overflow. Uh, after we pulled it into the driveway after our test drive, it was empty. So I refilled that. Yeah, guys, this is it, man. I like it. All right, guys. So... I think this is a good spot to end this episode. Um, I'm gonna call this a huge success. I mean, we had a lot of fun putting this radiator in. Everything worked the way it should. No major problems, no leaks. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Again, like, subscribe if you like this content. We got a lot more projects planned for the Cutlass. So come on back and uh, we're gonna have some fun.